Hey guys, Jeremy here from How To Hockey. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a mini backyard rink. Now, I've shown you how to build a full-size backyard rink, but the bigger the rink, the more work it is to set up, more work it is to maintain, and the more money it costs. So I'm gonna show you how to build a mini rink. It's really cheap, really easy to build, and really easy to maintain. Now, usually when I'm doing backyard rink stuff, I'm wearing these big knee-high rubber boots with the insulation, but Morel Boots sponsored this video and sent me these fancy boots to wear. So in this video, I'm wearing these. They've got this fancy Arctic grip technology, which is supposed to keep me from slipping around in the snow. So we'll see how that works. For supplies, all we need are four two by sixes. You can also use two by fours, but don't be fooled at the hardware store because a two by four is not actually two inches by four inches. It's one and a half inches by three and a half inches. And we need at least two inches of frozen ice to skate on. So that's why I recommend getting the two by sixes, which are actually five and a half inches tall those sneaky hardware stores. We also need a way to attach the two by sixes. I'm gonna use these little brackets which were under $5 at the hardware store. There's other options out there that are more expensive and you could also just use some nails, but I think these ones will do just fine. After we build the frame, we need something to hold the water inside. I'll be using this tarp. You can use anything that holds water, but I suggest a white tarp because anything that has color will attract heat from the sun. And that's gonna melt your ice. So the whiter, the better. If you can get a liner or a white tarp, that's the best. This one I had lying around, but I ordered off Amazon for my backstop inside my garage, but I'll link to where you can get something like this. The total cost for all this material was under $50 and it's a super simple way to get that ice at home. So you can work on that stick handling and that shooting. And you can even toss your skates on, especially for those little guys. The first step in building your mini rink is finding a nice level spot and then shoveling it. The first step is finding a nice level spot and snow blowing it. The reason you want a level spot is because water flows downhill. So if you're on a pitch, there's gonna be a lot of water here and no water up there and that's gonna be hard to skate on. The nice thing is with a mini rink, you don't have to worry too much about that pitch. If it's a little bit off kilter, you can just prop that up with a two by four, you'll be fine. Step one is to set up the two by sixes. We just need a square right here, so uh, it's really simple. Step two is to install the brackets. I'm gonna use this boot box so I don't put my power drill in the snow. Step three is to toss the tarp inside, and then we fill. Next step is to fill the rink with grape juice. Water. You fill the rink with water. And now, we wait. Okay, I think it's frozen now. Day number two of the mini rink. It's almost frozen, so the shallow end I can stand on fine. It's still not completely frozen over there, but it's frozen enough for little Mason. You can see there's a little water coming in on the side right there. So I think one more day, we're good to go. Feels nice and frozen. We've had three days and nights below zero, so this is now frozen. It's a mini rink, so it should freeze a little bit faster, but you'll notice that the ice is not very good. Nice thing is about a mini rink, it's easy to clear and easy to flood. So all we need is a few buckets of warm water that's gonna melt all these little rough patches off and give this a nice mirror-like finish. But we have to wait until the flurries stop. If you flood your rink while it's snowing, that snow becomes slush and it gets this gritty ice on top. So once it stops snowing, we're gonna flood this, good to go. Looking pretty smooth, but there's some rough patches. So I'm gonna get the shovel and just knock all those off. We've got a hole right there. I'm gonna fill that with slush. Just put some snow in there and that'll fill it right up. So all you do is just put a bunch of snow in there. You don't want it to be dry. You want to get that nice wet look to it. And you don't want any sort of form. You want it to be nice and flat. So I'm just packing it in there to get as much sort of snow in there as possible. And then scrape it off with the shovel and you should be good. You want it to be perfectly smooth though. I'm not gonna put on too much, I just want a thin layer, so a half bucket should do it. The idea is that if I put on thin layers, it's gonna build the ice a lot quicker. And then after this, I'm gonna put on hot water that's gonna melt all the surface stuff off and give me a really super smooth one. The reason this one isn't hot is because I'm just using it to sort of fill. I didn't get a perfect fill right off the start. So this is kind of uh, leveling it out just a little bit. So for my finishing layers, I'm gonna use hot water. 
Right now it's about 20 below Celsius. I'm gonna let this sit for about half an hour to an hour and then come out and put a few layers of hot water and then we can skate. It's been about an hour time to hit that rink with some hot water. Rink is ready, got a couple pucks, got my stick. Let's test it out. <laughs> Overall, I'm really happy with how this rink turned out. It was a lot of fun, it was quick and easy, and as long as the weather agrees with you, you should get pretty good ice. Uh, so the ice isn't perfect yet, but I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to shoot more videos out here. I'm going to give you more ideas on what you can do with this little piece of ice in your backyard. You're probably waiting for me to put my skates on. Hit that subscribe button because I will be lacing them up in another video. I'm going to do a few more videos to keep this going. For the people who are building at home, as long as the weather agrees with you, you're going to get some really nice ice, and it's really simple and quick and easy to build. Very affordable. You might be wondering, who wants such a small rink? I would say that anyone who's looking to build a rink but isn't quite sure, do this first because it gives you a really good idea on how to build and maintain ice and how to get good ice. And once you have that and you understand kind of the process, then you could just grow it on a bigger scale. If you don't have a full size back rank, it is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. So just doing this first will get you a little bit more comfortable and then you can expand. If you have kids at home, two or three years old, build something like this, you can get skates on, push them around a little bit. It's not too much work for you and they get a very good experience and then you can expand as they get older. I would also recommend something like this for kids. It gives them a bit of responsibility, something to do on a regular basis to maintain and get a reward directly from their work that they put into it. So the more time they spend and the more they know about maintaining ice, the better ice they're gonna get and the more fun they're gonna have. They can come out here and work on their stick hand and their shooting. If you have the net in nice and close, you can work on finishing those shootout moves, those uh, fancy Datsuki and Deeks. You can work on roofing it, shelving it, you know, getting rebounds. The nice thing is with this small area, whenever you lose the puck, it bumps off the board, comes right back to you. So you can do a lot of trial and error, a lot of correction, and you get that ice-like feel at home for cheap. That's it for the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit that subscribe button because we do new hockey videos every single week and I will be doing some more videos on this outdoor rink. Uh, I should probably mention the boots before I go. On the ice, I didn't notice any superpowers. I was still sliding like you would expect any boot to do. But in town, I wore them doing my errands and my chores. And I did notice on the snow and the slush, they felt really nice. I wasn't sliding. They had a good grip. And they're also very warm and comfortable. So thanks a lot, Morel, for sending me those boots and sponsoring this video. Uh, so once again, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.